our YouTube channel and to the East Coast Keto Test Kitchen. I'm Bobby. I'm Joe. And together we are East Coast Keto. Uh, we have a great recipe for you today. We're going to be cooking fish chowder. But before we get to that, please take a second and hit that subscribe button down below. And ring the bell so you get notified when you we put up a new video. My bell. Ring, ring my, my bell. bell. Fish chowder, I don't think you're going to go into any East Coast Scarf. <laughs> or kitchen and not have a different version oh, yeah. of... It's, it's basically whatever you got on hand. Whether it's a cod chowder or clam chowder or like ours, a combination of all of them combined. Yeah. Uh, clam is more popular like Eastern U.S., mm -hmm. New England... Because mm -hmm. oh, we don't get a lot of clams here. That mainland crowd. Yeah. So today we're going to be working with, we have some salmon, we have some cod, we have some shrimp, uh, some bottled lobster, mm -hmm. and we also have some previously frozen mussels. Yeah. They're not in the corner. All right. We also have some good old Newfoundland salt Chuck beef. Chuck salty. Yeah. Um, salt and pepper, we have some bacon, bacon fat, fat as always, and we got lots of good spices out here. We got some nutmeg, some savory, some thyme, tarragon. This is our xanthan to thicken it up a little bit, and fish sauce. Now, fish sauce, um, pre keto would have been what people call W sauce or Worcester sauce or Worcestershire sauce, depending on Worcestershire, sure, 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 W sauce, sure, sure. Yeah. Shire, which sure. is not keto because there's wheat. Exactly. So that's the equivalent of that. Um, we also have some um, broth. Now you can use fish stock or vegetable if, if broth or whatever it. your preference Bone is. Yeah. We have some 35% uh, whipping cream and also a little bit of vinegar to give it a kick because as you mm -hmm. know, it vinegar elevates the, elevates the flavor, that little bit of acid. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna put a little tiny bit of grated Great. carrot Great. in there, some onion, some always garlic. garlic. garlic and taking a stirring roll in our um, chowder today is going to be the chayote squash, or chayote, depending on what your school of thought is. Mm -hmm. potato, uh, potato. Exactly, it's, it's gonna be the potato potato, yeah. because we don't eat potatoes. But this guy um, is the Mexican squash. Yep. Yeah. And it looks a lot like a pear when you look at it one way, but when you turn it the other, it's kind of <laughs> squished in on the bottom. And this one, we, you've seen us use it in our mock, mock apple, apple. Um, but we're going to use it today in a savory recipe, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to do the uh, substitute as potato. The potato. Yeah. So that's what we got. We're going to go, and we're going to get everything all prepped and have it all cut up into pieces. So when we come we're ready back, to go. we just you do the assembly. You haven't got to watch us doing all that. So um, we will be back in a second with our fish chowder. Fish chowder. See you then. See you. Ready to roll. Let's break her up. What first go in there? Bacon fat. Bacon fat is already on board in there and ready to go. I'm going to grab a spatula. The purple one is my favorite. And the first thing we're going to add in, we have a medium uh, onion. And that's already been diced up into what I would consider a rough dice. Okay. Yeah. So we're going to throw that right on in on our fat, give it a little stir around to incorporate all, thank you sir, to incorporate all of those healthy fats. Now, as always, you're going to see me putting in some salt and pepper right from the very beginning because I believe part of building your flavor profile is to flavor every step as every we go. Every step as we go. So a nice bit of pepper in there. We're going to be making this for dear old dad today, and I know mm -hmm. he likes a lot of pepper. Yes. He All does. right. So we're going to put the pepper in. I am going to put a little bit of pink Himalayan salt. We are working with salt beef today, but I am going to put a little bit mm -hmm. of that in there just for good measure. measure. So we're going to cook the onions up until they're translucent, and that's going to take a couple of minutes. Okay. So why don't we let this cook? And we'll come back when they're translucent and we're ready to add in the next step. Okay. All right, so we're cooking under a medium low heat. So I'm roughly halfway between low and medium, around a quarter percent on my burner. 
Uh, the onions are pretty much uh, translucent there or starting to get so. We don't want them to, to cook too much. At this stage of the game, I'm going to push everything back and I'm going to go and I'm going to grab my garlic. Now the garlic has been diced up as a fine mince. How many? Um, three cloves of garlic. Thank you, sir. And I that in there. And I also have uh, four ounces of salt beef. And you know, it's funny because you see so many posts here in Newfoundland about people complaining about the fat. This is salt and beef and pickle. So none of the things that will hurt us as ketonians. And you now I know you're all used to um, boiling your salt beef, but here's a new one for you. We're gonna give this a nice little fishizzle. Down in the bottom of our pan. <laughs> and let that uh, sit right in the middle for a second or so. And then I'm going to incorporate the onions in. The next thing that we're going to after that is the spices. So we're going to do this fairly fast. We don't want that garlic to burn on the bottom of the pan. And you can see how that salt beef is already starting to cook for us. And oh my heavens, the smells are started already in the East Coast Keto Test Kitchen. I'm done. So as I said, this is going to happen fairly fast because the most of the cooking is going to happen when we put the liquids in and we let everything simmer. So again, we're going to push that back to the side right now. And I'm going to start adding in our spices. So in this, I have a half of a teaspoon of tarragon. I have a half a teaspoon of thyme and oh sorry a full teaspoon of thyme and i have a half a teaspoon of newfoundland savory so that's going to go right into the center of the pan and again you want those herbs to go into the fat and that's where they're going to bloom and blossom and you're going to get extra flavor out of them instead of just dropping them into boiling water we also want to put in, now I know this is going to be a different ingredient for most of you guys who do a chowder, but we're going to put in some nutmeg. If you have the real pieces of nutmeg or the full nutmeg, that's going to be the cat's pajamas, but we're going to put in one, two, uh, two and a half, one of pinches of nutmeg. And we're going to, oh my heavens. And we're going to give that a stir to incorporate it. Look at that. Look at that. It looks as good as it smells, I got to, I got to say. And I can back you up on saying <laughs> that smells pretty good. Alright, All right, so as the pan is starting to catch over here, you can see as I'm, as I'm pushing with the spatula, down on the bottom, it's, we're starting to get a bit of activity. So this is the perfect time to deglaze our pan. And what do we use for that, of course? Apple cider vinegar. Apple cider vinegar. So we're gonna take the apple cider vinegar. How much is that? That is a quarter cup of apple cider vinegar. And that's gonna cause a little bit of a stir in our pot. And I'm gonna use my spatula to go through and totally clean up the bottom of that pot because we wanna make sure all that goodness is out in our broth. All right, let's give that a minute and I'll get this guy out of the way. The next thing we're gonna add in is two tablespoons of fish sauce. And um, I'm just gonna put in a couple of dashes and eyeball it because that's the way I roll. Might be a little bit less or more than two tablespoons, but that is the way that I roll. So, Oh my heavens, that really changes the, the flavor of everything. But most of the vinegar is going to burn off and it's just going to leave the... Well, it's, it's like when you put wine in. Exactly. Yeah, it enhances the flavor. All right. So we've got all that in there and we are good to go. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to put in some broth. Now the recipe calls for five cups of broth. But I am just going to eyeball this again today for based on the amount that I want to cook for my dear old dad. And I may even add a little bit more as the cooking process continues. There you go. So that wasn't quite a full container. That was around a three quarters of a 900 ml container of broth. So here we are. Now we are starting to make chowder. Oops. I'm going to turn my heat back again. The next thing we're going to add in is our chayote. So that's been cut up into bite-sized pieces. And 
over here, if you look, I can take this and it's almost like a cross between a potato and an apple. You get a little tiny bit of an apple, but as you can tell, it's really crunchy. So we're going to throw that in and that's going to take probably around 10 minutes to soften up. So you want it to be soft, but still have a little crunch. You don't want it to be like totally mushy the way a potato would have been. Like church basement. Exactly. <laughs> you don't want it to boil away to nothing. So once I've got all that in, I'm going to turn the heat up a little bit and we're going to let that simmer away for around 10 minutes. And then we'll come back and we'll add in all of the fish and the rest of the ingredients. See you soon. Our studio audience. Our studio audience is behind us now waiting for some treats. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> okay, so we've been around 10 minutes. When I was chopping up the, the salmon earlier. You had a helper. I had a helper. <laughs> and, oh, a, a taste tester. Could I make a three for her? Totally. Totally. All right, let's have a look and see what's going on in our pot here. So I'm going to go in and have a look. Salt beef is cooking lovely. I want to try a piece of that uh, chayote. See if it's... Do you want to try? See? I'll tell you what, why don't I just lay it there and let it cool for a second? <laughs> right, so good idea. Because how many times have you guys seen me burn my mouth off? But I do want to test the, the broth and see what the saltiness is. Mm. That's lovely. And there you go, we can close it in hand. Perfect. It looks to be... Oh, you chopped it, but you didn't, yeah. minutes more? No, it's good. No? It's good. It should it should have a little bit of a bite, but it should should be soft. Mm -hmm. So like it's not crispy, crunchy. Well alright, so now we're gonna start adding in oh. the final ingredients. So let me pull that off again. Now the next thing I'm gonna add, and this is a little bit of a, a secret that is not in the main recipe, is just some grated carrot. Now if you are if you're, early in. If you're brand new ketonian and you're not Skip fat this. adapted this is gonna to be too high in carb for you. So you need to be fat adapted for this. And if you don't know what fat adapted is, we do have a video for that. And there's a write up in our, in our book. So in goes the carrot. Mm, and that is only just one, only one carrot. Like looks like a lot, but it is one carrot. All right, we're gonna let that go. I'm gonna turn it back up again because we were uh, simmering. And, um, once that gets uh, going again, I want it, I want it to uh, return to a boil really fast. And there from there, I am going to uh, start adding in the fish. Now, our lobster is already cooked. So that's going to go in last. <laughs> and a lot, a lot less of it. Mm, I guess so. <laughs> <What's up? laughs> I don't like lobster. Most of the carrot that's in there is gonna disintegrate. It's totally gonna yeah. gonna boil boil away and just add to the flavor profile. All right, so we started the roll here. So the first thing I'm gonna go in with is my cod, and I have around uh, eight ounces. It's two fillets. Okay, well, a, yeah, fill, a fillet right. can be this big, yeah. or a fillet can be that big. So we use the the, the Costco portions. They're individually shrink wrapped, basically. Um, they're around four ounces each. So this is around eight ounces. I was right. No, that's when the food fishery is not on and we don't have a, we can't a steady go, we supply. We can't go get our own, exactly. Right. Alrighty. I also have, this looks like around six ounces of, yep. um, of salmon. And we're going to throw that in there. Oh, now she's looking good. So this is when you need to look at your pot and evaluate um, if you need to put any extra broth in. So let's have a look and see if we need any extra broth. So as you can see, we have our fish to broth ratio is uh, kind of high. So I'm going to put in some extra broth here now. Because there's still a lot of fish to go in there. Because there's yeah. still a lot of fish to go in there. And you know, as you know, the more broth you put in, the more the more you're going to feed. Now, like more I water in the soup. Like I said, keep in mind that that a lot of that carrot is going to uh, disintegrate and just uh, become incorporated into the into the batter. 
Um, and I'm also going to put in my shrimp at this stage of the game. So I have around six ounces of shrimp. Now you can either cut those up or leave them whole. Um, I'm going to leave them whole so dear old Tails dad on. can, yeah. He likes them like that. Tails on because there's no other way to have, have your chowder. And I also have some mussels and my uh, cooked lobster, but we're going to wait for a minute. We're just going to let that simmer away for around five minutes and then we'll add in the rest of the fish. Let's have a check and see how our fish stew is going or our chowder. So you can see our pink tails, our pink tails, our shrimp tails are starting to turn pink and our salmon is starting to cook. Let me see if I can bring up some salmon. There's some right there. So I'll add in the remainder of the fish now. So that being the mussels. Now our mussels were frozen, so they're, they already look like they're partially open, um, which, is, which is good, which is okay. And our lobster, which is cooked as well. And we're gonna settle that in there. Oh my heavens, oh, I think dad is gonna like this. <laughs> I know two puppy dogs are gonna have a, a lovely, lovely supper tonight as well. All right, so, we're gonna let that go for another few minutes. Um, we will come back and finish with our cream and with our thickener, and uh, then we will get the taste test. We're gonna simmer that covered, or? We can put the cover on it, yes, by all means. All right. Hey. Our fish chowder is simmering away. Everything is looking lovely now. You know what, you can leave this simmering on your stove all day, which is what we're probably gonna do after we finish our, um, our camera shooting. Um, because really, the longer you leave this, the better it's gonna be. You can see the nice pieces of uh, chayote in there. You can see all the nice pieces of fish. And my preference when I, when I eat this is, is to have it um, more of these chunks dissolved, but uh, for for showing you guys what we're going to do is we're going to continue on forward. We're going to take, we have a half a cup of 35% whipping cream. Get it all out. Get it all out. Nana wants us to get every pick out. Perfect. And I'll give that a little stir to incorporate. Excellent. And the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of our xanthan gum. Now xanthan gum is our thickener that we use. Um, and of course we're ignoring the container. I put it into a shaker just to make it easier to use. I'm going to get my spatula out of there and I'm going to go in with my whisk. Now you want to very slowly add this in because this is an ingredient that creeps up on you. So sprinkle a little tiny bit in and just ever so gently give it a whisk. Now what I'm, tr I'm trying not to disturb the, the fish too much, but I'm mean, trying to uh, incorporate, look at that piece of lobster, that piece of lobster just wants to, wants to get in my belly. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna keep adding in uh, some, get out of there, be free, be free. I'm just gonna keep continuing to um, add in the xanthan gum and give it a minute and see what happens because we don't wanna make it too thick. Like I say, this ingredient, as it, uh, as it sits, it thickens. So just add a little tiny bit at a time and continue to stir. And um, I'll keep working on that. And if you guys come back in a minute when we're gonna have everything all finished, we'll let it go for uh, another couple of minutes simmering away in the pot. And then we're gonna taste test. The question is, is our Bobby Chef Jeff? Uh, no. <laughs> You're on, you're on your own for this. Gonna one. try some or not. Stay tuned. Look at that. Okay, so for me, that's the perfect consistency of chowder. Now, if you want it thicker, you can certainly make it thicker. But um, for me, that's great. And if you look at the broth, you can see how the carrots are pretty much gone away to just little tiny pieces now. And the longer you let that sit, the more that's going to um, incorporate into the dish. So let's take out, oh my heavens. I need a, I need a, I'll take two. <laughs> a couple of shrimp to go on top. Oh, there you go, because that's the way I roll. So let's pull that over there and I think 
I'm going to let it cool a little bit because, well, I've already burned my nose several times and we're going to let that cool for just a few minutes and then we're going to try it. Welcome back. And we're back and the sniffers are going full time. So Dad doesn't <laughs> want to taste test. I brought a helper. But I think we have someone who wants to taste. Yes. Yes, it's true. So let Mommy get in there first and see what we have. I want to dig out a piece of that chayote. Okay? Mmm. The tiniest, tiniest. Hello. A bit of crunch. The tiniest, tiniest bit of crunch. Salt beef. Gotta have the salt beef. Perfect. Mmm. How about me and you try a shrimp? I think that's the best. <laughs> <laughs> She's. You're gonna have to baby bird this. Mm -hmm. mm. I'm gonna burn your mouth. You ready? <laughs> That's okay, my mouth will leave anyway. Okay, easy. Oh, yeah. Yum. So, I think our seafood chowder or our fish chowder is a success. And I believe I'm gonna go have a bowl for supper. And I know two little girls. Who are gonna oh, have yeah. gonna have some for their supper as well, yeah. full of lots of omega threes, and lots of healthy fats, and healthy fish. Yeah, it's it's lip licking good. <laughs> so let's turn. You turn. There you go. So everyone can see her little face, <laughs> and we will be back next time with another East Coast Keto recipe for you guys. Enjoy. Talk, talk soon. Bye. Bye.